do this shit until they murder me. What's going on, YouTube? Back with another episode. Wanted to give you guys an update on a few things I was working on. So, firstly, we got the speed sensor that I'm working on. Now, I don't know if you can tell. Well, you probably can tell from here. So, you see, it's supposed to be that close. Uh, apparently, according to the Cherry Hall sensor setup, um, it's got to be between 1 and 1.5 millimeters away from whatever source it's going to be getting the signal from. So, I made this bracket and I wired it in. It's all ready to go. Um, the only thing that I forgot in my zealous nature is that the bolts that I'm using to hold on the or to clamp together that axle cage are stage eight, stage eight locking bolts and they're stainless steel, not magnetic. I completely spaced this <clears throat> so I had to come up with a solution. So for right now I'm testing, I put some washers, uh, I just like super glued some washers on there to see just, you know, just to see if it would work. Um, if it works, then I'll, I'll find a more permanent solution. But for right now, that's, that's how it's going to go. Um, I also, I don't know if I mentioned it in another video, but I also said that I was going to be doing, uh, addressing my overcooling issue and I was going to install this and I did. This is a JEGS inline thermostat housing with a stant 180 degree Chevy thermostat. And this was disappointing. This did not work as well as I thought. I tested the thermostat beforehand to see if it would actually work to make sure I didn't get a dud. Um, that didn't really work out in my case. So this thing really blocked up the flow. Like it, it did a really bad job of opening at temperature. When I tested it, it did open, but it opened a little later, like 195-ish. I know it's not supposed to open right at 180, but 195, 200, and when I took the car off for a drive, it was overheating. Not like 230, but it went up to like 210, 215-ish. And it, uh, the car has never seen those temps before. The highest the car has ever seen was about 195, and that was when I was on the dyno. So I took it off. No longer going to run that. Um, so I'll probably be selling that here soon. And I don't know what I'm, I don't know. So what I think I might be trying is I've been looking on the internet and it appears that Davies Craig, the larger Davies Craig uh, pumps like mine, um, have a problem with overcooling. I've been seeing them on um, Beamer forums and S14 forums, blah, blah, blah. And I think what people have been trying to do is actually they, they either step down to a smaller pump, which I do not want to do because I'm going to eventually be tracking the car, you know, autocross and blah, blah, blah. I don't want to do that. So people have been blocking a portion of their radiator with like cardboard to see if that helps and also disabling one of their fans, which I already did. Uh, since it's cold outside, I've been disabling my fans because I really don't need it in this 30, 40 degree weather. Um, another thing that I wanted to try was to, there's a piece of hose. So this is like radiator. So I'm going to try to maybe get a piece of Get a piece, a long piece of steel stock that fits inside here that I can actually weld a disc inside with a hole. So sort of restrict flow. Um, not too much. I don't want it to be too crazy, but I'm going to maybe, maybe like a, I don't know, like a 10, maybe 8 millimeter size hole. Whatever, I'll, I'll, I'll probably, I don't know if I'm going to do that yet. It's just something that I read online. Uh, so as of right now, it's still... Um, overcooling, I guess you could say not as bad as it was before. Um, it did help. I did bleed the system a lot. Um, this is a little different than, uh, bleeding the system normally on an MR2. So I don't know if you guys have ever, if anybody who knows who's ever done a, a bleeding or bleeding the system in an MR2, it's a lot more difficult than a normal car. It's just because the coolant system runs the length of the car. So let me show you here. This part. This part right here is the heater control in the front of the car. This is in the frunk, what we call the frunk. It bolts to the firewall there. And you have to open this, this plastic knob at the top with the screwdriver, attach a hose to this, and then put it up so that air can go upwards. It has to go higher than the highest level. And then you have 
you have your radiator here in the front and you have your like pet cock here to bleed it so you have to uh, attach a hose there as well and um pretty much both of the hoses need to be up so you need to like tape them or however you can do it then you got to put the heater on full blast you have to have the engine running and it does help to have the rear in the and uh, the rear in the air jacked up a little bit so that uh the air can sort of move that way that was not fun <laughs> now my system uh thanks to this to uh sorry thanks to the control box that i feature many times that thing actually allows you to override uh the pump control so it doesn't need to wait for the temperature to rise you can override it and have it pu uh, pump full time so that you can bleed the system the car doesn't even need to be on so uh, i really really like that <laughs> rather than jacking up the car. Actually, jacking up the car, uh, bleeding the system that way actually really doesn't work well. Uh, I, I find it works better if I uh, keep it level. And um, when I was having some trouble bleeding it with this, uh, this was causing more, problem with the, more problems with the bleeding process, um, I tried to drill a hole in the thermostat, just a small one, because it doesn't have a jiggle valve, just a small one, about you know, three millimeters wide, just to see if that will help with the air. It didn't really work. Um, still was having problems so bleeding it sucked so i switched back and now the car after last night's test ride is running much much better it's now reaching before it would struggle to reach 130 degrees which is my uh, safety uh, cutoff for the ecu it's getting about 145 150 and even on my drive yesterday hit 155 it does come down pretty quick because one also like <clears throat> i actually forgot to disable one of the fans i have one of the fans on um and it's cold outside so everything's running as it should and now the car runs a lot better um i know i said that i had some issues with uh my afrs the car is running really really rich but a local buddy of mine here helped me uh sort some of that out i actually uh found that my gauge my um uh, my wideband setup how i have it connected uh through the analog input in the k pro is um not necessarily communicating correctly. So it's about two, two and a half points off. So the gauge will read two and a half, uh, 12 and a half. And then the, the K Pro will read like 15, 16 ish, somewhere around there. So I have the power going straight to it, to its own switch source. But I, I didn't know that you had to uh, ground it to where the K Pro is grounded. I have it grounded to where the east, to where the uh, motor is grounded, to where the chassis is grounded. All that is the same because that's how I did it on my last motor and that's how it worked without any voltage offset. Clearly not the case here, so I'm going to have to get on that. But uh, that actually took a backseat for a minute while I was dealing with the overheating issue. I was really hoping that it wasn't some sort of like um, chronic overheating issue and then I blew a head gasket because i had a lot of those problems with the 3 gt uh, even with a freshly rebuilt motor and the moment it even came up to temp to 200 205 degrees one time that was it and it would constantly overheat i'd be watching that needle i'd be watching that digital gauge like a hawk with a video camera and it would never be the same after that and i'm really happy that this did not go that route um just shows me just how much more resilient the motor is in factory form so aside from the speedo and the afr gauge and now not the thermostat but the the coolant system everything else is okay um i think i'm gonna maybe think about getting a little collab video with uh, one of my buddies in his shop uh he's got a, a few mr2s there and uh one just left the shop but it's having some issues again so i think maybe i want to try to get some uh some non some non-turbo content I know he built another motor for for a member here and there's another one a built 3s gte uh that's going to be going in a car for a local here soon so i want to get some of that documented maybe the install process show you guys you know how you know how he does it on the lift because the way we do it in the garage everybody's done it in the garage and it sucks so maybe i can get some of that footage for you um really not much else to go on so when i get some time i'll make another video here and uh catch you guys on the flip peace all right, y'all, decided to give you guys a little sneak peek at what I was doing here with the thermostat. I had this line connected to that hose, and I had this in between it, thinking that this maybe this sensor was more accurate um, than the other one that I was using to see if maybe that's why the, 
the set, the readings were, were so off, but this read the same. So, um, good thing I had it actually here. So this actually, the, the space that this was taking up is the space that my thermostat will now be taking up. So the length of the hose will be the same. So I'll have it like this a little higher up. Actually, this will, this is falling down, but I'll have it like that. And I'll just be able to, this will be probably about right here. And then I have a little hose, a little bit of, a little bit of hose here that actually connects to it like that. So I'll just have to cut this down a little bit and it'll be able to work. So yeah, I should probably give you guys a shot of the underside of the car since I've never really done that. Axles, manifold. Yeah, no, there's a leak there. I don't know where that, I don't know why my axle seal's leaking, but weird, even though it's everything else done tunnel the fuel system I don't know if I can get some of that have that secured up there with some uh, some brackets and some uh, metal wire ties but it's sucked away so none of that you none of that will see any harsh conditions so we'll be good the exhaust get some of the exhaust under here the Pexi M1 Evo and I have the mounting bolts for all this air to water stuff back here Cool.